to Empowering. My name is Caroline Porter Thomas, and thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel. And welcome to Anatomy 101. This is the fourth video in this video series, Anatomy 101. So to see the other videos, make sure you click the link above. This video is really fascinating because we're going to go over the relationship between the skin and the other organ systems, such as the skin and the nervous system, the skin and the endocrine system, the skin and immunity, and more. Like I mentioned in the last video, there's so much more to our skin than meets the eye, so it's just so fascinating to learn all of this information. All right guys, without any further ado, let's get right into the video. The skin and other organ systems. Our body works as one unit, despite its varied organizational structure. While the skin seems to concentrate on nothing else but to provide cover and protection, it is actually well connected with the other systems. The connection maintains the homeostasis, which is the balance in our body that makes us healthy. This is what we are going to talk about in this section. The relationship between the skin and skeletal system. Aside from the fact that the skin covers the bones of the body, the integumentary system is also essential to the skeletal system because of the production of vitamin D. When the epidermis is exposed to certain UV rays, it is triggered to produce vitamin D3. This vitamin will then be converted twice until it becomes calcitrol, an important component in the kidney that allows proper absorption of calcium and phosphorus in the intestines. Without these calcium and phosphorus, having healthy bones is next to impossible. Just think of the children who suffer from rickets, which is a painful condition where the bones become brittle and deformed due to lack of vitamin D. For older people, lack of vitamin D will result in the softening of the bones, which is a condition called osteomalacia. Relationship between the skin and muscular system. Imagine this. If the uppermost layer of the skin is essentially dead, then how come we are also able to feel changes in the environment? For example, let's say a poisonous spider or snake crawls over your leg. How can you feel it? And how would you avoid being bitten? The answer is simple. The hair follicle is located in the dermis and can sense the change. The sense will then be sent to the brain and the brain will tell your eye muscle to look and you will see the spider or snake before it bites you. The smooth muscles around your hair follicles also automatically contracts when we feel cold or scared. That's why the hairs on our skin stand up. This action actually creates warmth. However, since we don't have that much hair in the body, we usually only see what we call goosebumps. Relationship between the skin and the nervous system. The main role of the nervous system is to serve as the communication line between the brain and spinal cord and other organ systems. When something happens, the nervous system acts rapidly because time is of the essence. How does the skin enter this picture to help the nervous system maintain homeostasis? Well, the skin contains various nerve cells which have sensory functions. Imagine yourself in the kitchen and you accidentally touch a boiling pot. Do you think first before removing your hand? No, you remove your hand automatically because after your skin sensed the danger, the situation was immediately sent to your nervous system which decided that your hand must be removed. As your skin feels, the nervous system is always on guard to command the other systems to do whatever needs to be done to survive. Relationship between the skin and the endocrine system. The endocrine system is comprised of all of the glands in the body that produce hormones. There are also exocrine glands that produce substances via ducts, the most common of which are sweat and oil glands. The primary hormone that affects the skin is said to be estrogen. When estrogen is lacking, the skin will look dull and dry because it lessens the production of collagen. With dull and dry skin, the integrity of the integumentary system to protect the body notably decreases. When the skin feels heat, the exocrine system will come into action by activating its sweat glands. This way, some of the heat in the body will be released and the body temperature can go back to normal, or at least close to normal. Relationship between the skin and cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular system is responsible for the pumping of blood all over the body. The pumping organ is the heart and blood vessels. They serve as channels. When you feel cold, the brain signals to the blood vessels in the skin to dilate. This action allows more blood to flow in your body and increases your warmth. 
Additionally, the skin is one big mirror that shows if you have a cardiovascular system problem. A bluish tint on your skin, fingernails, and lips could be a sign that there is a blockage in your blood vessel. Another thing is when you have clubbing, which is a condition whereby the nails curve downward. This may be harmless, but for some people, it is a sign of an underlying heart disease. Lastly, can you recall the last time you had a wound? Did you notice how it became a little swollen and red? This is because the blood flow increases to the area so that oxygen can travel and wound healing is promoted. The relationship between skin and immunity. The immune system makes our bodies safe from pathogens and the skin helps it to achieve a lot of those goals. The first function of the skin is to prevent bacteria and viruses from entering the body. This makes the integumentary system the first line of defense against pathogens. Hence, when you develop a cut or deep wound, bacteria can enter and infection may set in. Remember that in the dermis, there are lymphatic nodes present. When there is an infection, the nodes will become swollen, signaling to the person that something is invading the immune system. Also, there are special cells in the epidermis of the skin, which are called the Langerhans cells. These cells are part of the immune system as well. When there is a threat of infection, let's say from a cut or wound, the Langerhans cells will send immune cells such as T cells to the site to help fight off the bacteria or virus relationship between the skin and respiratory system. Some sources state that there is a significant connection between the lungs and the skin. According to Chinese medicine, particularly the Zhang Fu theory, the lungs can control the pores of the skin. Hence, the lungs have the capability to control sweating and thermoregulation. But of course, this is a theory and still needs to be scientifically backed. What we know as of now is there is some respiratory conditions that will manifest through the skin. Typically, when a person is in respiratory distress, he or she will have sweating on the head, but his skin will not be warm to the touch. There are also times when people with respiratory conditions appear to have a grayish or bluish skin color, denoting lack of oxygen in the body. Relationship between the skin and the digestive system. Digestion is the process of breaking down the foods and absorbing the nutrients to be used by the whole body. While the skin and gut seem to have zero connection, a lot of people will state otherwise. The truth is, when you browse the internet, you will notice many articles saying that a healthy gut will pave the way to healthy skin. But how is that possible? Well, first and foremost, what we eat affects how well our skin will look. For example, there are some people whose skin turns yellow, a medical condition called jaundice. This may be a harmless result of eating too many yellow or orange foods like carrots, or it could be a manifestation of a serious illness due to problems in the liver, such as with alcoholism. But let's not talk about the food, let's talk about the direct connection between the digestive system and the integumentary system. According to many health experts, the intestines will not be effective in absorbing the nutrients needed to have a healthy integumentary system. It will manifest by having things like dull hair and brittle nails. Now if there are blockages in the intestines, for example constipation, the waste materials cannot be excreted, causing the toxins to be absorbed back into the body. This could cause things like acne to break out. The relationship between the skin and the urinary system. Because of the sweat glands present in the skin, the integumentary system works together with the lungs, intestines, and kidneys for excretion. The urinary system in particular works with the excretion of the fluid waste, which we refer to as urine. The primary organ for this is the kidneys, which are the bean-shaped organs that filter out waste materials. When we sweat, we release not just the toxins, but also the excess salts. This maintains the electrolyte balance in the body. The skin can show signs of urinary problems. Edema, the swelling of certain areas, commonly the legs, hands, and feet, happens because of fluid retention caused by certain diseases at the kidneys. The relationship between the skin and reproductive system. Experts say that the skin is the target of sex hormones and steroids. Thus, if there are imbalances, the skin will show it best. For instance, an overactive production of androgens causes oily skin. If you're someone with kids, can you remember a time when you noticed hyperpigmentation in areas of your body such as your armpits? This is also because of the reproductive hormones, which can suddenly change during pregnancy.
Because organ systems are discussed separately, it's easy to think they all work independently. However, as you have learned, the systems are connected to each other, just like how the skin cooperates with the other systems to maintain homeostasis. More than giving us a covering and protecting us from harmful elements in the environment, the skin also helps the bones stay healthy. It has regulatory functions, it regulates temperature, excretes toxins, and maintains the electrolyte balance. So in the end, our skin is not just an element of beauty, it is very essential to every part of our survival. Alright guys, I really hope you liked that video going over the skin and the other organ systems, the relationship. I hope you found it as fascinating as I did. I sure thought it was amazing. So if you like videos like this and you want to see more of them, please make sure you give the video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Also, if you are taking anatomy and physiology or you are about to take anatomy and physiology, I highly recommend that you become a member of my channel because for only $5 a month, I have an exclusive video program that shows how I went from failing anatomy to acing it and I've taught thousands of other students to do the same using a very unique systematic approach. So if you're interested, you can click the link below or you can go to the main page of the channel and become a member. And of course you can cancel anytime, but your continued contribution will help me with making more videos like this. Also, stay tuned because in the next video we're going to go over the different types of cartilage. I promise you, you don't want to miss that. Alright guys, I will see you in the next video. Love you. Bye.